It was Ian's idea to form a, a ska band. He convinced me to, to go along. We didn't have any anybody else, which is my brother and I. And then we put a little ad in Duke Music magazine saying, you know, um, hey, we are. <laughs> We're putting together a ska band. Wow, you know, a ska band in Australia. I didn't expect to hear ska here. You know, because anything I knew about Australia growing up was based on the white Australia policy. So none of it was positive. The Hearn brothers had this pretty committed stance, politically tied in perfectly, you know, with ska music. Well, you say we're not in we thought, oh, it would be great to have another brass instrument to play with the sax, and uh, I said, I'll play trumpet. And I remember Ian saying, but you can't play trumpet. I said, it's all right, I'll go and get one. We were genuinely motivated by an opportunity to play music we loved. We didn't want to be under the control of anybody else. But secondly, the reality was um, the uh, the, the music industry in Australia also didn't, weren't interested in us. There was about a thousand people close to it at this gig, and of the thousand, I reckon at least 500 were skinheads. Skinheads actually brought blacks and whites together. I was a skinhead. They were real wild. And, but you know, the thing about Australian men don't dance. So they bloody well did there. The dance was, you know, probably much more like something you'd do at football training or something like that, but it was still a dance. The band became our de facto family. There was no arguments, you know. I mean, Ian and Bruce might argue a little bit, but, you know, we all had our backs and, you know, we called ourselves brothers. I don't want to be a soldier, boy. I'm too old to go and play with... I thought it was going to be something that we'd do for a bit of fun for six months or so and, you know, what is it, 36 years later? Here we are.